Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday afternoon. I'm Kyle Bosch. New for you at noon, the Navy shipyard in Washington, D.C. got quite a scare this morning after reports of gunshots. Government officials were already on high alert for terror activity with the 4th of July holiday coming up this weekend. Kelly Meyer has the latest from the nation's capital. We're here inside the U.S. Capitol where additional security has been added due to what happened this morning at the Navy Yard. Now at around 8 a.m., the U.S. Navy tweeted that the facility was placed under lockdown. Now that's the same facility that had the 2013 shooting that killed 12 people. And now the facility, they cleared the search at around 10.15 and say they found no evidence of a shooting and no one was injured. And here at the Capitol, they deployed extra field units to keep an eye on things over here, adding extra security. And our Alex Miller is over at the Navy Yard with team coverage. She'll have the latest developments for you on Facebook and Twitter. Keep it on there for any details on this story. For now, reporting from the Capitol, I'm Kelly Meyer. Now, as for the warning about possible terror attacks over the holiday weekend, the FBI says it has no knowledge of any active plot at this time, but issued the warning out of precaution. Officials say people should and still enjoy the festivities, but if you see something suspicious, report it. We are following a developing story in central North Dakota. Police there investigating a murder-suicide that was possibly witnessed by the couple's child. The Wells County Sheriff says it happened Tuesday night on a rural road south of Highway 200. The sheriff says Brady Wolf shot and killed Samantha Maxwell before turning the gun on himself. Maxwell had spoken with the sheriff just about 15 minutes before the incident, telling him she was concerned about picking up her three-year-old from Wolf before a restraining order against him took effect. Now, the child was not harmed in the shooting and is now with other family members. At least 5,000 people have been evacuated from their homes after a train derailment near Knoxville, Tennessee. Authorities say the train was carrying a flammable and poisonous liquid when it went off the rails around midnight and caught on fire spewing toxic gas into the air. No injuries have been reported, but a spokesperson for the local hospital says 12 emergency responders were being de decontaminated. People who live in that area are also being advised not to drink well water because of potential contamination. Well, it's the last day of work for many people headed ahead of the 4th of July holiday weekend and looking pretty good out there. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn, who has a first look at our Thursday afternoon forecast. Yeah, for the most part, uh, seeing some decent conditions out there, some filtered sunshine with still some of that smoke uh, making its way over the top of us. So some hazy conditions out there. Temperatures mostly into the 70s, 72 in Wadena and also 72 in Bemidji, Fergus Falls, Steve Irr Falls and in Roseau. 73 degrees. Here in Fargo, all rain cooled 61 down in the Aberdeen area. On the satellite, most of us enjoying some sunshine. There are a few clouds around, and we're starting to see a few showers popping on up over portions of the area. And that'll be the trend as we head through the rest of the afternoon and on into the evening. And some showers and some thunderstorms, and now seeing a little bit of lightning just to the southeast of Carrington. And we'll see these storms again as we head through the afternoon and evening hours the best chance for those showers and storms along and west of the red river valley today they're going to stay in the 70s maybe a degree or two warmer than that but staying in the 70s for the most part in the valley tomorrow with more sunshine a touch warmer we've got uh, some more sunshine and some storms to talk about as we head through the holiday weekend we'll detail that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Robert, we'll see you then. A Minnesota woman was hurt in a crash near Wadena this morning. The Minnesota State Patrol says a car driven by 23-year-old Colleen Horsodger was headed south on Highway 71 when it went off the road, hit a barbed wire fence, then an electrical power pole. Troopers say Horsodger is from the Sabika area. She was taken to the Tri-County Hospital in Wadena. She was wearing a seatbelt. A suspect is in custody following a deadly shooting outside a Twin Cities bar early this morning. Police in Coon Rapids responded to a call to Willie's Bar and Grill just before 1 a.m. They found a 29-year-old man in the parking lot suffering from gunshot wounds to the chest. He later died. Police say the incident stemmed from an argument over a poker game. Now, the bar does have surveillance cameras, but officers would not confirm if the incident was caught on video. Got a heads up for you for people with student loan debt, or if you know someone who does, Minnesota's Attorney General is suing a Florida company that promises student loan forgiveness. Lori Swanson claims Student Aid Center, Inc. is instead taking advantage of students by charging them hundreds of dollars for programs that are free. Experts say that people can visit the National Student Loan Data System for more information on repayment and consolidation programs. And we have that website posted at our website, 
Just head to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. BP has reached an $18 billion agreement to settle claims from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Back in April of 2010, an explosion on an oil rig killed 11 workers and spilled more than 3 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. Today's deal settles claims with five Gulf states, Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas, and more than 400 local government entities. BP will pay out the money over the next 18 years. The spill has been recognized as the worst in U.S. history. The Fargo Park District is celebrating Parks and Rec Month with a photo contest where you can win some prizes. All you have to do is snap a selfie or a group shot in any park or at any park district event, then post it on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter using the hashtag FargoFun. People will be voting for the winners on the Fargo Park District Facebook page. Well, the 4th of July still a couple days away, but some kids in Fargo got an early start on the celebration this morning. The Sanford Child Development Center held a kids parade at their downtown location. You can see the children were lining up on the sidewalks on Broadway, waving flags and banners for the people passing by, and of course wishing everyone a happy 4th of July. Good for them. Looks like a lot of fun.